You know how frustrating it is to take your sewing machine needle out, you set it somewhere, and then when you go to use it again, you have no clue what size of needle or what kind of needle it is. You feel like you have to get out a magnifying glass to read that little teeny writing on the needle, which is very hard to do. And so if you don't know what kind of needle is, you just pitch it because you don't want to use the wrong needle for the wrong project. I'm Jan Hal and I have the perfect solution so you're not wasting needles. You know exactly what kind of needle it is, if it's still good. In this DIY sewing tutorial, I'm going to show you how to make this nifty little sewing machine needle sorter pin cushion. It's cute, it's functional, and very easy to make. Let's jump right into it. This is a boxy little pin cushion. You can make it just like a pillow if you want to, if you don't want to do the box corners, but they're really easy to make and I'm going to show you how to easily do that. Let's go over the items and things that you'll need. You'll have to decide on a fabric print for the back side and oh man, I love fabric and I love all these fun colors. So I'll probably have to make one up of each one. Choose a cotton woven fabric for the back side. You'll need an iron. If you have a rotary cutter, a rotary cutter makes cutting out these squares really easy. It's not necessary. If you want some tips on using a rotary cutter, I have a great tutorial for that. Some pins. I love using these fabric clips and something to stuff it with. You could just stuff it with just normal fiber fill stuffing, but I like to have some weight to it. I use this crushed walnut shells. You can get this in bulk. I, I, you can get this on Amazon. You can buy it at a pet store. They use it for reptiles. This is called Desert Blend. All it is is ground English walnut shells. And they say it helps sharpen the needles too. So if you are using the walnut shells, you'll need a funnel to help put that in when we are stuffing it. A needle and thread, some kind of measuring device, a ruler or this seam gauge. I made this job really easy for you to get this printable iron on PDF. I'll put the link in the description below where you can locate that. And it comes already mirror imaged and a PDF file without the mirror image if you want to print on fabric. But I find that it's just easier to print it out and then iron it on a piece of white muslin. This is just an upcycled, tightly woven pillowcase that I'll use. And you'll need some transfer paper, iron-on transfer paper for clothing. I like this brand. It's, it suited me for my all my labels, and it works really well. I'll put the link in the description below for that. The PDF comes mirror imaged and regular, depending on how you want to print it out. It has several different types of needles on here. It has a place for universal needles, stretch needles, jersey needles, microtex, quilting, embroidery top stitching, jeans, and a twin needle. And it also has the different sizes, which is ideal because even if you know it's a universal needle, you don't know if it's a needle for lightweight fabrics or for heavyweight fabrics. And I can just put it right in that slot. And another good thing to do is to get some kind of different distinguishable pin like I have these little flower pins and the needle that is currently in the machine is where I'm going to put this particular kind of pin. Then I know this is what's in my machine and this is what type of needle is here. And I can reuse them so handy. And let's get right into the tutorial. The first thing that you'll need to do is print out your PDF on transfer paper. You want to make sure you're using the right kind of transfer paper that indicates for your type of printer. If there's inkjet printers, laser printers, you want to make sure you're buying the correct one for your printer. Real easy to do. Print it out. You can print this out on fabric. I think that's a lot more work. 
than just printing it out and ironing it on. So I printed this out. As you can see, it's mirror imaged backwards so that when I apply it to the fabric, it's going to come out and print the right side. Set your iron to a cotton setting with no steam. You don't want to have any moisture or any steam on your iron. And the surface that you want to use when pressing this out, you don't want to use it on a regular ironing board. Get a cutting board or I'm just going to use a board with a sheet on it and then I'll place my fabric and press it on that hard surface. After you print your transfer paper, you'll want to let the ink sit for 30 minutes to let it completely dry before you iron it on your fabric. So I've cut out a piece of muslin or white fabric. I've made sure all the wrinkles are out. I placed it right side facing down. And just start applying pressure. And you want at least 20 to 30 seconds on each area. I'm going to just go back and forth. If you remove the paper while it's still warm, you'll get more of a matte finish. If you want more of a shiny finish, let it, com let it cool completely before you peel the paper off. So I prefer more of a matte finish. So I'm going to go ahead and pull the paper off now. So look how crisp and clean those lines are. The colors are bright and vibrant. I just love this. I decided to go ahead with this print. If you are using a print that has a lot of white in the background, you may want to double up the fabric like I did with this one. I put a layer of muslin and doubled that up so you don't see the crushed walnuts through the fabric. I have also used a double layer on the top fabric and so as you can see, you can see these lines behind there. You'll see the dark, you'll be able to see the dark behind it. And I prefer, not a big deal, it's not gonna leak or anything, but I, I prefer that nice crisp white look. Besides this front piece, you'll need two more pieces of the white fabric if you have something that's see-through. So let's cut this out first. And these squares are five and a half inches. If you want to make this method, without the square boxy edges, cut out your fabric and your template to only four and three quarters inches square. And that works out perfect for this type of cushion. So we'll need to cut out one of these. Just a tip, if you're right-handed, have the fabric that you're going to be cutting off and not using all on the right side when you're using your ruler. If you're left-handed, have the ex excess fabric on the left. So on my ruler, I'm gonna find five and a half inches, line up this bottom edge. I have cut out two white pieces and my other pieces. Take your graph, place it on top, and line up the edges of one of the white squares and print facing up on top of another white square. So we're just double layering it and we're gonna treat that as one piece. Leave the print facing up and take the other two squares and place it right side facing down. Line up your edges as best you can and clip them in place. So to leave a place for to stuff it, we're going on one side we're going to leave about a two inch section open. That way we can stuff it. And for me, I like to use two red clips or you can use pins, whatever. That reminds me that I don't wanna sew past those red clips. It doesn't have to be exactly two inches, but we need to leave a section about that big open. So just take it to the sewing machine. We're going to start at one of these red clips, take it off of course, and sew around the edge and stop here.
When you get to the corner, leave the needle down, lift up the presser foot and pivot. I'm using a 3 8 inch seam allowance, which is just the edge of my presser foot and a straight stitch. Now, as I mentioned earlier, if you want just to have like a pillow type look, you can just leave it like this and turn it inside out. But I prefer to have this boxy look and to get that boxy look, let me show you how that's done. First, you wanna clip off the corners, making sure you're not cutting into the seam. And then we're going to open up, make sure we're pulling both layers of fabric open at the corners. So I'm gonna grab those pieces of fabric, two and two, and pull them out I like to flip one seam allowance this way and the other that way so that it lies a little bit more flat. I want to make sure they're pulled out evenly and then I'm going to lay that flat and I'm going to start measuring from the point of the seam and I like using I like setting it on top of my cutting mat because it has the grid and I can eyeball and make sure and kind of eyeball where that seam is straight so it's going to when I work what we're going to be doing is just sewing these little ears a straight line here so you can take your ruler and I'm going to we're going to go a half inch up so here is my half inch about there and or you can use your ruler there. So there's my half inch. And the line of the stitching's kind of eyeballing, even though I can't see underneath the fabric where that line is going to be. And then I'm going to just trace a line, a stitching line right there with an erasable pen. Or you can use a pencil if you want, lightly use a pencil but this is going to disappear in just a bit. Now, a lot of people just eyeball this. They go to the they open it up, flatten it out, and sew. But there's times where I do that and it's not quite straight, so I like to just mark where that's gonna be. And I'll clip that in place. And do that for all four corners. So just take your fingers Grab the fabrics, make sure you have two. One seam allowance going that way, one going this way. Make sure you're pointed out to the point, right to the point. Find my half inch. And this is actually going to create about an inch box. Okay, now we're ready to go ahead and stitch down that line, back stitching at the beginning and the end of the seam. We'll clip off 
those corners, leaving a quarter inch seam allowance. Find the hole that you left open so that you have the print showing and the back piece or the top piece and turn it right side facing out. Poke out the corners. Now that we've turned it right side facing out, we're ready to fill it. As you work with the boxes and everything, this tends to get a little wrinkly. If you've used an iron-on transfer, you don't want to press it. I've even tried putting a cover on it and this is what happens. It will pull off the transfer. So I have found that it, the wrinkles, after you get it stuffed and it sits a bit, the wrinkles come out. So no worries about the wrinkles. I keep my ground walnut shells in this nifty little container. For this size, you'll need about a cup. Take your funnel, slip it into that hole that you left, and then we're going to just pour in a half a cup at a time. And this smaller one only takes about three quarters of a cup. You want it to be quite firm, but you don't want it to be overstuffed. See how that, just, you know, just to your liking, whatever feels good. And this is where the fiber fill stuffing will come in handy. I like to just take a little bit and apply it just at the top there, right above that hole. So when we're stitching it, the, those little granules won't Fill out. Take the, fold in your seam allowance to match up the seam allowance that it, along that edge there. And I find if you pull it, it will naturally fold. You have to kind of maybe stick your fingers in there a little bit and just help that edge fold under. So it lines up with where you started sewing the seam. Take a few clips and clip it in place. I have double threaded a needle and knot at the end. We're just going to use a ladder stitch or a slip stitch to sew that closed. I like to do two passes so that it really gets it a tight stitch so those little granules aren't coming out between stitches. So to begin, just insert your needle on the inside and poke it out right where that the sewing machine seam ends on one side and just tuck your knot down inside. I'm gonna flip it this way now. You'll be inserting the needle inside the fold on each side. So I'll insert my needle here and pop it out. Just take little tiny stitches. And then I'm going to go directly over to the other fabric, insert the needle and stitch right in the fold on the edge of the fold there and pop it out and go directly across to the other fabric into the fold little tiny stitches and then we'll continue all the way to the end and then I'm going to go back so I've already made one pass I'm going to flip it and go back the other direction and try to stagger the stitches so I'm really getting a tight seam there. So I'm poking it out between the stitches and doing the same thing all the way back down. When you get back down to the where you started, take a little tiny stitch right there at the end Pull your thread, but leave a little loop and then wrap your needle around it a few times and gently pull to create a knot right there at the base of the fabric. I'm going to poke that in and poke it out the back somewhere. 
pull it tight and clip your thread. There you have that nice hand stitched invisible seam there. I have another video showing you some other handy hand sewing stitches that are good to know. At the, you can, I'll put the link in the description below for that as well. There you have it. Fun little project, something that's very useful and helpful. No more confusion about what needle is what. You know exactly what you have. You can not waste any more needles and you can sit this little pin cushion next to your sewing machine. If you're new to sewing and want to learn the good old basics or you want to refresh your sewing skills, make sure you check out my Sew Simple courses. I'll put the link in the description below. I'll also put the link where you can find the pattern, get the free needle guide printable, which is really handy to have. If you're new to the channel, make sure you subscribe and click on that bell so you can be notified for more upcoming tutorials where I help you make sewing and crafting a little easier and more enjoyable. Have a wonderful day and we'll see you next time.